Hello everyone, we're making a handle so we can operate the quill in this milling machine just here. The quill shaft comes out of the side, our handle will be attaching itself to that quill and hopefully locking in place. Now when we finished the last video we had the hub of the new handle in the indexer here and we had moved the head in Y axis and managed to get the centre of rotation of the vertical head right over the centre of our job. We now want to move the job in X and the X axis is this one here. Now to move in X we use this top wheel here. If we turn this handle clockwise you can see that the table goes across to the left. If we stop, come back anti-clockwise we can bring the table to the right. Now we want to eliminate the backlash so what we're going to do is turn the, the uh, handle anti-clockwise bring the table as far as we can this way and what will happen is the chuck of the vertical head will actually bang against the chuck of the indexing head so that would be as far right that we can go at that point we then turn the handle clockwise that will eliminate the backlash and now we can start turning it clockwise until we get the center over the join that we want to measure from so let's get on with that we've set up our center and now looking down from the top of the job we are bang in the center of our hub here the next thing we want to do is work out the position of the hole in X which is this plane along here. Now the hole is actually 14 and a half millimeters from the end of the hub. So what I'm going to do is move the table in this direction and bring the center over the join between the, the hub and the adapter plate. Once it's there I'll then be able to move this in X in this direction uh, 14 and a half millimeters and that will give us the exact position of where our hole needs to be drilled. To move the table in the right direction I need to turn the X wheel clockwise. Now to eliminate all the backlash I've already gone anti-clockwise as far as I can and I'm now going to start going clockwise so the backlash will be taken up and now you can see the table is moving in, in X and we're coming up to the center just there so that center is now bang over the line between the hub and the adapter plate at this point i now zero the scale wheel on the x-axis handle and now i can turn the x-axis handle and move the bed 14 and a half millimeters as we know this machine is an imperial machine so i haven't got millimeters on the scale wheel i have thou 14 and a half millimeters uh, when you do the calculation it comes out at 0 0.5708 so that's 570.8 thou so we're going to round it up to 571 so we've got to move the handle four turns which will get us half an inch because each turn is an eighth so we go one two three coming up to four just there so that is half an inch and now we've got to go another 71 thou which is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 one thou just there and we look down from above and uh, the little centre dot which I did is just a little bit out but it shows that it was in the ballpark which isn't bad but we're going to believe the centre because the machine is far more accurate than me with a, uh, a rule and a centre punch. Right let's power up the machine and centre drill this job. the center drilled in the top of our hub I place a 2.5 millimeter drill in the chuck in the milling machine and drill to a depth of 15 millimeters this hole will be tapped M3 a little later on now the center we've just drilled and also the 2.5 millimeter hole I drilled those using the quill on the milling machine now it just so happens that an 11 millimeter socket fits quite nicely on the square shaft so if you put a power bar into the socket we now have a handle and we can operate the quill quite nicely. Now that was fine for drilling the centre and the 
uh, the hole, the 2.5 millimeter hole. But the next thing we want to do is to use a slot drill and counterbore that hole. Now I want to go down seven millimeters, and the quill hasn't got a uh, a scale on, so you can't measure how far you're going, how deep that you're going. So what I'm going to have to do is find the top of the job with the bottom of the milling cutter and then use this handle down here. Now this handle is the Z axis handle and this controls the height of the table. Now it has its own scale wheel, very similar to the X and the Y uh, wheels. Uh, this one for some reason, one complete turn is a tenth of an inch where the other two are one eighth of an inch. Why they did that I'm not sure, I would have thought keeping them all the same would have been nice but it keeps you on your toes. So I'm now going to use this wheel to bring the table up and gauge the depth that our cutter is going to cut to. So that's what we're going to use, the Z-axis wheel. I've replaced the 2.5mm drill bit with a 5 16th inch at 7.9mm slot drill milling cutter. This type of milling cutter can be used to plunge cut. This produces a nice flat bottom round hole, a counterbore, and that's what's needed here. I'm using the Z axis wheel I've just shown you. This wheel controls the height of the table and therefore the depth of this hole. The depth of this hole needs to be 7mm deep, that's about 9 32nd of an inch. The counterbore has just been cut and that's gone down 7mm from this top surface here and in the bottom of the hole you can see there's a 2.5mm hole and that needs to be tapped M3. That 2.5mm hole we drilled down through the centre, I now want to tap that M3. I've just put the, the tap in the top, we haven't got any room to hold a centre in the vertical head of the mill which is a shame, uh, so I'm eyeing up along this axis here and also that axis there to make sure this tap is nice and vertical. Uh, I've already put some cutting fluid on, the, uh, on the, the tap itself and now I'm tapping down to the bottom of the hole. I've just put the job back into the chuck of the lathe. I put a clock on the outside because uh, as we know three dual chucks are not brilliant bringing the jobs bang on centre again. There was a little bit of run out and it wobbled a bit. I found the high spot, just tapped it a couple of times and now it's round about as best as I can get it. The chuck is done up nice and tight. So if I just show you, you see there's a little bit of run out but not, not too bad. Now the next thing we want to do is bore out the centre uh, of the job. We're going to start with a with a drill and then we'll bore it out from that drill. So the first operation I'm going to do is go in with a, a large centre, in fact here it is here, and see if I can chew up the hole in the centre and also the little countersink there. And that's worked quite well. This view is looking into the front of the hub. The centre hole that was just re-drilled is in the middle of this face, just here. The green locking plate is sitting in a recess that's mainly 25mm in diameter with a flat bottom. It does have a little extra material removed just here to clear this part of the locking plate, but more on that a little later. The view here is a section through the hub along this line. Our re-drilled centre sits just here. The recess the locking plate sits in is 18mm deep and our next task is to start to machine it. At the moment the hub is approximately 35mm deep, that's an inch and a half. It needs to be turned down to 25mm, that's just under an inch. So the plan is to remove material from the centre of the hub with a large taper shank drill. Once that hole has been drilled, the front face of the hub will be cut back until its overall thickness is down to 25mm. Now, using a boring bar, we will open up the hole just drilled and make the recess 18mm deep and 25mm in diameter. We have a 20.5mm diameter drill in the tail stock and we're going to be drilling 25mm deep at this point, so we're on a slow speed. Let's turn the lathe on and start drilling. Uh, 
and there we go. The hole is drilled to a depth of 25 millimeters. The next job is to cut back the front face until the hub is 25 millimeters deep. And that's just there. And now, as if by magic, the boring bar is in the tool post and it's time to start working the hole. The diameter needs to be opened out to 25 millimeters and its depth increased to 18 millimeters. Like most jobs when you're using the boring bar, you can't really see what you're doing. You have to be very aware of tool position and keep a close eye on it using the scale wheels and measure dimensions often. The hub is now 25 millimeters long the centre hole 25mm in diameter and it's 18mm deep. The next thing we need to do is cut this angled surface. The angle we're looking for here is 20 degrees. I've moved the compound slide from here to here. There's a scale just down here that shows degrees of movement. Here's a close-up of that scale. You can see that I've set it to 20 degrees. So we are about to go. The cutter you can see moving here. I'm winding back the compound slide and you can see that it's cutting at an angle and we know the angle is 20 degrees because that's what's set up on the scale. Now as it starts to cut this surface I want to take it such that the top of the angled surface comes round about in line with the edge of the counterboard hole just here. So let's get the rotary converter on, start the lathe and we'll start doing our angled cut. Our angled surface is complete. It's not a bad surface finish. The top of the angle surface comes in line with the edge of the counterboard hole where I wanted it. And the, this edge is also 10 millimeters from the rear of the hub. So that's spot on. The last thing I want to do is just skim this surface, take off as little as possible. And that's to get rid of these you can see here there's chucking marks. They were on the piece of steel when I took it out of the shelf. It must have been from the CNC machine it was on when it was originally cut. This is an off cut that I, I was given. Right, let's just touch this surface. I think that is it. And that was a tenth of a mil on the first and then half of that for the next cut. Well our job is looking really quite smart at the moment. It's nice and shiny all over now we just skim the outside of the hub. The next thing we've got to do is change the shape or modify the shape of the hole in the middle of the hub so it takes the locking plate that we want to put in there. But unfortunately that's going to have to wait till the next video because we've run out of time today. If you enjoyed this video can you please give it a big thumbs up? It'll only take you a couple of seconds and it's really good for the channel. And with that this video's at an end. Take care everybody, I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can.